Good evening. Welcome to the first session of the Food for Rhino webinar series. Uh, we are very happy to have you here. Thanks for waiting. And I'm Carlos Perez from McNeil Europe and Food for Rhino. Today we have the pleasure to introduce you to Jevero. This is a new footwear pattern engineering um, plugin for Rhino. And our friend Frederico Trentin will show you some examples of what they do at the office, how they develop the software, and of course, there will be also a live demo. Please feel free to use the live chat on YouTube because my colleague Carla Sologuren is also there moderating. And then at the end of the webinar, there will be some time for questions and answers where I will collect uh, all the comments or the main comments you are posting there. Carla will send this to me. And then uh, Federico will be uh, will be able to to answer this. So thanks, Federico, for being here. Uh, it's Thank your you, Carlos. Turn now. Thank you very much to you for setting this up and to McNeil as a whole for the opportunity. So uh, yeah, my name is Federico Trentin. I work at this company called Design and Develop. It's uh, in the northern side of Italy. And yeah, we are a studio, a design and development studio, and also we make software. So we're here to talk about Jevro. It's a plugin for pattern engineering um, made inside a, a, a place that makes shoes. So it's pretty interesting. So let's go ahead uh, with my presentation, title card. <laughs> Uh, I'll talk a little bit about my, um, the company I work for. My company here, it's called Design and Develop. It has actually 30 years now of history as a design and pattern engineering studio in Asolo, Italy. And yeah, we're, we're a small company and as, uh, we like to keep it small because we like to be agile and on the front uh, always of the footwear innovation. So we've always been looking for the newest developments in materials, in technology. So it's a family run small company and we provide services for footwear to anybody that, uh, that wants it. So our, um, our core businesses are three, design, so we can develop uh, designs for uh, every kind of shoe that you want to make. And then we can provide you with services um, that go across all the pipeline of producing a shoe. So we go from uh, making a mock-up to making a small production, or we have contacts around the world to produce and find the best solution for um, people who want to make shoes to uh, produce shoe in larger scale. So design development. And recently we have opened a new department that is software development. So before this, we're going to take a look. This is the type of work we make. So we, we make uh, outdoor, uh, outdoor boots, trekking, hiking shoes. These are motorcycles, uh, motorcycle uh, boots. And yeah, we, we work with several brands and this is the type of concept to the final product that we package, that we deliver um, as, as a, our core in design and development. So I'll quickly go through this is, um, so we're here to talk about software. So recently we have opened this new business unit that is totally dedicated to software. And it uh, came to satisfy a need to improve technology on at 360 degrees. So um, making software to improve a process, to improve uh, the quality of the work. We customize application and software tools. Um, we, we, we create tailor-made uh, tools for every company uh, that asks us to. And we focus on delivering stable and dependable software. 
So we like our software to be stable and to work well in all situations and that um, what we want to do and we want to keep uh, doing. And we are always looking for improvements and new things through clear and direct communication with users and customers. Uh, one feature that is, um, it can be lacking in software development companies is uh, the understanding of what the customer wants. But um, in, in our case, we mainly, uh, we mainly have projects regarding footwear so it is a, a big advantage for us to be able to be in a footwear environment while making software for footwear. So that is very, very important for us and a key advantage for us. Our main product is Jevro. Uh, it's a software for pattern engineering, as I said, and we chose to develop it inside Rhino as a plugin to take advantage of the Rhinoceros platform in terms of drawing and um, creating, creating designs. Very, it's, it's very powerful, of course, and very quick and very stable. So we, we created a plugin for this uh, reason mainly. Let's go. It's a pattern engineering software that was commissioned to our company in order to replace the old Crispin. So if you used Crispin in the past, uh, Jevro will look familiar to you because we, are tr we, we try to make it similar in a way because it was commissioned to us in order to replace it and have the least uh, trauma possible for people who used it. Um, but now it has taken its own uh, kind of identity. So... We, we started from there, but now we're trying to improve it and make it bigger and add uh, many different functions. We want to break through the stable pattern engineering software market through quick assistance, low price, extent, and compatibility. So something that happens um, inside um, in, in CAD software for, for footwear is that a lot of the times the... Uh, the software is uh, paired to a, a cutting machine and has restricted compatibility. And sometimes it, could, it can be difficult to make software, software and machine communicate if it's not made for the same thing. So we try to make it in a way that you can use it with every kind of machine and kind of uh, uh, expand our market in this way. Enables tight open collaboration between pattern engineers, shoe developers and designers. So we, another reason why we made it um, inside, as a plugin inside Rhino is that if you make designs, if you de develop 3D, uh, if you develop souls, you are likely using Rhino. So pattern engineering, putting inside uh, putting, putting Pattern Engineer inside Rhino is another layer of uh, compatibility and less stress in, a, in a, um, different files, you know, you know the, the drill. It is integrated with McNeil Rhino, supports all fi major file extensions on the market, including crisping files, .shoe and .pat files. So as I said, it's, um, it has familiar tools, so it, you can find everything um, that a CAD for, for footwear will, will give you. So margins, boundaries, notches and stabs. We try to be as flexible as possible, like Rhino is. Um, we try to give as many ways to do one single thing as possible, just for you to find the best uh, the best workflow that suits you the most. Um, so from the design, it's, uh, you can go from the design to creating all the different sizes and various reports that we are going to see. Audit, so it, is, it, it also generates 
information about the production, so costing and processing areas and all that. So it, it, it comes all in one package that, um, and it's, it is inside Rhino. So now a little bit of our results for now, the software has been active and stable for more than two years and it is now used uh, across US, Indonesia, Vietnam, Germany, of course, Italy. And we have more than 400 users. We are pretty proud of that. And it is used steadily to mass produce shoes all around the world. So it has proven to be uh, a stable software. So um, this was my introduction to our company uh, Rhino and, uh, and Jevero, sorry. I will go ahead and switch to the demo and go over Rhino. So here we are inside Jevero. You can see my, my interface. It's a little customized. First thing you, you're gonna notice is that we are on top, on, on the top uh, viewport, so X, Y, because it does work in, uh, it does take advantage of the 2D platform on the top uh, viewport. So we are on, on a 2D plane and you can see that there are different panels from, from the usual Rhino interface. Uh, we have three toolbars up here, J pattern design, parts and grading. We have a toolbar around here, I put it like this, and we have different panels. So entity filters, parts, board templates, grading, and all that. So um, this is what makes, uh, makes it a little bit uh, personalized from, from Rhino. So you have the entities here that you can create, and it adds an important feature that is uh, key in um, in pattern making, which is um, modularity. It, it is, it does the edits uh, influence the other lines. So I'll show you what I mean. This is a model that we made internally. So this is the, uh, the big picture. You can see that we have all our pieces developed like this. Uh, stuffing, loop, uh, the color, it has all the all the natural natural pieces of the shoe. This is my shell, so I started from here. And yeah, so I will go ahead and show you a little bit how to start. I will create a new file with my shoe template. So I'm going to import uh, a um, a scansion, so you always start from the 2D scansion of a pattern. This is my pattern. I'm going to import it and place it over here. So the scanner is in 1-1, one, one, uh, in 1-1 one, one scale, 1-to-1 one, one scale. So it will put it down, of course, as a 1-to-1 one, one scale, but you can always adjust, of course, the size to what suits you the most. One thing that is, I never get tired of saying this, but inside Rhino, you can really take advantage of the power of Rhino to do whatever you want, which is not the case with some other competitor softwares. But yeah, we try to be as flexible and as quick as possible. So I'm going ahead and tracing through the, this little pencil here, which is just a curve drawing tool. We'll make this one. And just a little quickly, then you can be, of course, as precise as it can get by just zooming in, you know. I'll be very quick just for the sake of making a couple of lines. Here I need an axis.
like this. And I'll make this one as well. So let's say I want to make this part here. I, I can hide the background image and I can make this so I can add a couple of entities just so you can see uh, what I mean. So I could, for example, place a margin here, which will be my, my lateral line. I'll say 20 and okay. So this, this will be my part. I can put markers as always like this and they will be in a group. I can put notches. I will make just a size notch here like this. And okay, so one important thing, as I said before, is parametricity. So what this means is if I have this line and I make an edit, the, the edit will be brought down to the dependent lines that are made from the baseline. So if I made a margin, which is a parallel line, um, it's an offset, it's called an offset in Rhino. Um, it will be edited as well as the notch will change its position, its position. I can do this as well here. You can see that it will edit the lines and the, the consequent markers in a way that if you have to make a modification to your design, to your pattern, which is something that happens very often, uh, you will be able to put this, uh, these edits very quickly and very comfortably to, um, to the whole model. So the, the sort of game that we're, uh, that we're talking about here is that you will have to build a, a proper model that once you, uh, once you learn to use it, and once you learn what is what your best workflow is, you're going to just edit one line and, and you know that that line influences some other lines, some other entities that will make your modifications, your edits very much quicker and less painful, I would say. So yeah. Um, of course, you can create uh, parts. So um, I will just create a very quick part. And this will then uh, become my health color. You can mirror lines, of course. And you can do all sorts of stuff that are useful to pattern engineering. So I'm going to go ahead and so I have this model, but already finished. It's this. And as you can see, this is my finished model. This is my shell. So with all the lines here, it was a course that I made for, uh, for some people using the software. And for clarity, I have made uh, different layers for, for example, my lateral and medial air and for the axis. So I, would, I put the axis as a blue and uh, dashed hidden line and lateral in green and medial in, um, yeah, in black. No, it's the opposite. Never mind. Uh, so from here, uh, we'll, we'll see that the parts are nothing other than uh, a, a, a game with visibility. It's a sort of play 
with uh, how you view your model. So if I double click on, the, on, a, on a piece, I will see it. And then I can see it's generating lines and I can see the whole model like this. I can add, I can add it in this way. So it becomes very quick to just uh, use all the visibility options. For example, uh, I use a lot the uh, isolate to just be very quick and very um, and make it very easy for me to work on a, a few lines. And yeah, so this is what a finished model looks like. Uh, yeah. And other features include the generation of sizes. So I can create a grading table. I can say UK size grading. I can say uh, my sample size is eight and I want to go from a range of six to 12. And the plus minus, so the next, uh, the next uh, size will be nine and not eight and a half. So I'll say, okay, and I'll have my, my sizes. I can take a look at a, at a part and go over here and see my different sizes. For example, I can stack them this way. So I can see the differences. I can make my measurements through all these functions here and over here. So this is how you develop the sizes. And then let's say you are over and you want to export this part, for example, you can go over here and see uh, one of our interesting, most interesting things. So here we have a lot of different um, files, file types to various cutting tables. So we have XGEOM, PCUT, of course, DXF, Atom uh, files, Lectra files, and then PDF, a plain Rhino model. So we know um, we know Jevro um, semantics, SVG, and all that. So I'll export in DXF, and you'll see that I can choose various configurations for a DXF as well. And I can pick my, my parts and for, for every part, uh, whichever size I want. I can export here. Sorry, I can go over uh, more configurations here for with colors. I will not touch this, but of course, a DXF is a very complex file that is read differently in many, uh, in many cutting tables. So we needed to have an export that was universal. So yeah, and when you say, okay, you will export this, uh, these things and it will be exported as blocks uh, or as layers as you, as you wish. So we'll close this. Um, one, another thing that is uh, asked uh, a lot is, can I make groups? So groups are things that grade, um, that grade maybe equally for uh, different sizes. So you can perhaps uh, maybe cre create a part here. And let's say this is the space for a logo. If you develop many sizes, you might need to develop a, a logo and say, for example, I want the logo to be the same logo for these three sizes, six to eight. And for these four, I want a different size. So what I can do is create a group and say logo.
and say this from here to here, it will develop like six. And from here to here, it will develop like 11. Then I can go over my groups. I can add my curves. Okay. All right. And then this will be Excuse me. Uh, yeah, so I will activate this part. And we can see that it will develop just in three sizes, the sample size and the two that are similar. So yeah. So um, I can, I will show you just Two last things. Um, there is a customs uh, and layering feature that is over here. This is used when you export, so not export a file, but just export from one country to another. Uh, you can. There are a, a lot of customs uh, clearances that have to be done, and general and reports need to be generated. To see to see how much taxes you you need to pay and all that, so you can uh, assign the colors uh, and the the materials to various um, to various uh, materials, so to the various parts, and then it will automatically generate reports through these buttons to uh, clear that. So it, it becomes, we work a lot on these features. It's very quick, very convenient to use. And it's inside, it's, uh, it's inside the, the license. And also processing areas is something else that we've made. So processing like scratching, like modifying, if for example, you're using leather or, um, different materials that need more work, you can create new processings, new, I just call it like this, and see, for example, here, excuse me, you can maybe perhaps say, yeah, I'm not good at this, but um, you can say in this area, I want a specific work to be done, processing areas, anything, ev everyone that's familiar with, with shoes uh, production knows what, it, what this is. So you can, uh, you can do that also and create various types of uh, processings and all that. So um, this is, oh, we also have the costing, so I will quickly show you. We also have a costing tool that is, that, uh, that makes a nesting. So for example, I can set this material to be leather and, and it will perform a nesting uh, to, to, to make the placement of the pieces on uh, a sheet, a, um, a material, a leather, you can personalize the shapes. And um, so there is, and generate reports, of course, uh, on the costing. So it, it will come out here and you can generate reports and all that. So we try to put uh, everything that is needed for a shoe inside um, inside Jevro, uh, from design to cost calculation, and everything is done inside Rhino. Uh, so yeah, this uh, been um, this is my presentation. Uh, I hope you 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 liked it. I hope I was 
uh, clear enough. And if you have any questions, you're welcome to make them. So yeah, thank you very much to everybody. Um, Many thanks, Federico. This was fast, uh, but yeah, I think there were some questions on the chat mm -hmm. and I can maybe read the, uh, this. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, well, thanks to all the participants here. We had people from Boston, from Mexico, Colombia, Barcelona, Italy, uh, New That's York, great. San Luis, Arica, <laughs> Chiel. I mean, more than 150 concurrent viewers. That's... And uh, I think they like your presentation. Probably they will want to give it a try. They can download an evaluation version on Food for Rhino, right? Yes, it is on Food for Rhino. You just download it. We have a 90 day trial, much mm -hmm. like Rhino, just to make, it, uh, to make it equal. So you can try it for 90 days. And we actually, today we, we just uploaded the, the newest version, which is the one I'm mm -hmm. using. So you will get the, the super latest version, which, is, which has come, come out today. And there are tutorials and videos on your website as well. Yes, on YouTube, you can find tutorials to start to use it. There is also some Rhino Basics uh, tools, but yeah, uh, it covers everything. To, um, there, there are hours and hours of videos so, that mm -hmm. we uploaded. So um, just on how to make a shoe, on how to do in depth every, everything that I showed briefly today. Okay, nice. So let's go to the questions. Sarah Rabeda uh, says, asks mm -hmm. if Jevero uh, can link back to the 3D design lines 3D model. Oh, so right now the possibility uh, work is in 2D. So you work in 2D, it does not uh, bend, it does not lay down on, uh, on other models. We are working in that direction, but uh, to deliver a more stable thing, we believe that the 2D is the, is the most straightforward and easiest and uh, more precise way that we have right now to make shoes. So, no, you, it, it can work in, uh, in 2D. Mm -hmm. And uh, the advantage is that you can have everything inside the model. But right now, for example, it does not communicate with a soul yet. But Yet. for now, no. Okay, maybe in future releases. Yes, definitely. But yeah, it's a future thing. Yeah, because Eric Hondebring, by the way, hello, Eric. Uh, Hi, Eric. Long time, long time. I don't, I don't talk to you. Uh, he goes in the same direction and says that for orthopedic patterns, 2D, mm -hmm. 3D integration is necessary. Mm -hmm. um, so you... Ideally, you should be able to import the 3D scan of the last, flatten mm -hmm. the surface, and draw on the 2D copy, or directly on the 3D last. That's, I guess, yeah. a suggestion. Yeah, that is the direction we're going to. Uh, as of now, this is um, it's to prepare shoes for production. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, it is it is something that we are very much looking into and uh, and working on. Uh, but this it works in 2D for now. Okay. We yeah. Paolo Cagnato, I guess from Italy, says pretty the same. So he asked if, okay. if it's possible to design the upper pattern on a 3D last and then create a 2D flat pattern. I think okay. it's the same, yeah, the it's same a, question. Yeah, it's kind of the same question, yeah. And yeah. Um, yeah it, maybe it could be confusing because Rhino <laughs> is a is a mainly a 3D, 3D software. Uh, software, but yeah, it, it works on 2D. And the advantage is to not have any compatibility issues and to have everybody on the same software. For example, a, a, a pattern engineer, uh, so excuse me, a person who already uses Rhino could very quickly uh, learn pattern engineering and use Jevero very proficiently from in a, in a very short time. So this is why, because Rhino is so, um, is so widespread and, and a lot of people can use it very well. 
this was another reason that we made it as a plugin. But yes, for now it works in 2D. Okay. Uh, there is also A.B. Suresh, and he says if you can show the coasting process. Yes, sure. So once I, uh, for example, select my part here, I, I say export only active parts. I press on this button here. And um, it, will, and it will open another window that is Devra cost. And here you can create um, the material. So you can create a new material. Here I have a list of materials that I, I have made. It's kind of a mock-up. Something is, uh, it's realistic. So yeah, these are microfiber, um, leather, and I put some prices and I created a category category. So you can set up the materials. And once you, you have all your materials list, uh, you have your active part and you can set um, which material it is. So you can say leather type, uh, leather type one, which is something that I, I put or microfiber. And once you do this, you can set an allowance. So I'll say two. So the distance uh, between one piece and the other on the nesting, uh, I can adjust it like this to put it as straight as possible. So, and I give a rotation factor of 90 degrees. So it will generate a, a couple of pieces that will then rotate 90 degrees. Now to be, to be quick, it's a process that can take some time. So uh, to be quick, I'll say uh, this. And of course, uh, initial rotation, which is some, the, the thing I just did with the rotation. So once you, you do this, you can start the nesting. And it will, you can see, this is my roll, so my whole roll, and it will place and make a nesting like I this. Think, I think we don't see that screen. We don't see. Oh. Maybe it's on. No problem. I will. Now? Now, yes. Yes. Okay. If you can repeat the process because yeah, it's, sure. normally it shows uh, yeah. on top of Ryan, right? But. Yeah, uh, it's, maybe it's a different window. I, I'm not sure. But yeah. now uh, we we'll see it. We we'll see it if you can repeat yeah, it. Yeah, no problem. Sorry. Um, here, I have created my materials. So I can give it a name, create a category for, for example, textile. Let's say textile one. And let's say it is a row. So it's a, it, it's a row that you can place and you can set up a cost. So once you do this, you see that they have my list here. And then I go here over the part setup and I say the allowance. So the distance between one piece and the other on the nesting, the, ro the rotation factor, which is this. Uh, so I can place it very straight and say rotation factor is 90. I, I set up the material and say this is a uh, microfiber and, and uh, I'm okay with that. And then I go over to the nesting and I have my list, which is only this part for now. And when it does the nesting, so it, uh, it goes like that. And, and then it will present you with the roll with, the all, with all the, the pieces uh, placed down to to export in the XF like this as a role or uh, just to select a part and all that. So I will end it. Nice. And once you, you're done, you see that um, it will calculate the, the, the efficiency of the piece and then create um, a report. So I can say, copies per pair. In this case, my color is uh, two per pair. And it, it tells you how many pieces he has placed, the yield and the cost. 
and then you can generate the report. Here you can see that my total cost is 57 uh, cents to make one. So yeah, this is how it works. Was it clear enough? Is it good? I think so. Otherwise, okay. we will see the comments. <laughs> <laughs> OK. One other question um, by Fake Fake. I hope he's not fake. <laughs> he says, he um, does the coasting module, or is the coasting module based on parallelogram? Uh, which file formats can you export the reports to? Oh, it's DXF, and yes, it, it's um, it's based on parallelogram, but also in the nesting it places two um, two pieces. So it first starts because we have found that it gives the best the best results. So it, it places two pieces. You can give it a rotation factor of maybe uh, one degree. It will take the whole night to make, but it will find the, the absolute most efficient, uh, the most efficient uh, placing. So yeah, it, and uh, it's DXF and I believe PDF that you can export to. But yeah, DXF is the most the universal universal uh, file for for this type of thing. So. Perfect. SVG and DXF. It's not PDF, sorry. SVG. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Then Patricio Ortiz asks, uh, but this is more related to Rhino, I think, mm -hmm. is how accurate is the uh, 3D to, to 2D smash tool from Rhino to approximate general lines to develop in Jevero? You know that for, for surfaces that are not... Um, unrollable with unroll surface command. There is the smash okay. command in Rhino. It does an approximation. Well, actually there is another user uh, mm -hmm. if F equals F, I think this is Aaron, that uh, squash gives you the amount of stretch, but you need to know the material yeah. uh, first to know how it will stretch, of course, because every yeah. material stretches with different Yeah, that is, that is why mm -hmm. uh, Basically, we work in 2D because the, the, the pattern engineer knows what to cut, the extra layers you have to put, and specifying a material, of course, it can be done, but if you ask 10 pattern engineers on how they do it and how it stretches and how it's made, you will get 10 different uh, opinions. So it is... Um, of course, an interesting task to make something that uh, makes everybody agree, uh, but also that we have that direction and we want to make it in the best way possible. So yeah, it, right now it's very, um, it's very tricky to make something that works very well uh, with flattening surfaces. So yeah. It's, a, it's always an approximation and yeah, I, th I believe that uh, uh, you will always need a, a feedback from a from person that knows the, um, the, the art, let's say, of pattern engineering. Yeah, yeah, that very same as the grading algorithms, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. You have to always to create. You, everybody has its own rules, its own way they do it. Mm -hmm. So we we want to give as many tools as possible to make it, and we think that we have achieved. But yes, it's a, it can be tricky and can be very complex too. Okay. Uh... There is there are some other comments. One by mm -hmm. Brian Hughes. Hughes. Hello. I believe we we, we spoke. Hello. Ah, okay. uh, nice to meet you. And he says that they use Rhino for three D insole mm -hmm. and outsole design. Mm -hmm. uh, we need three D for current isolation shoe design and integration, where the connection to the outsole outsole is fundamental. I think okay. it's again related. To yeah, it, it is. It is related. Yes. Uh, well, we will take 
uh, your feedback uh, as gold. So yeah, thank mm -hmm. you very much. Yes, the for now. Yeah, I think that this needs to be your your next big <laughs> yeah development area. Then we have um, Toy Bratton. He says, having built Jebero for pattern making specifically, have you discovered any tools natural to the Rhino program that can do certain functions better or more effectively? Uh, that's an interesting question. Um, one that I found is the springing tool. So springing is a, a complex um, thing that pattern engineers do to flatten a curve, for example, um, to make it in a way that when you open it, the, 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 the shoe becomes, uh, comes out very, um, very smooth and, uh, and perfect for wrapping around the, the mold. Uh, Rhino has some powerful editing tools and I, I've used uh, rotation with points or the bend, can you see, you can see for sure, the bend tool here to teach springing um, in a way that does not involve the, the hand process of, of springing, but just to make it in a way that is editing, it becomes editing a line and not as much springing. So to simplify it, because as I said, Rhino has some pretty uh, powerful tools in, uh, in its arsenal. So to, to, to edit curves, to edit uh, lines. So that one uh, surely is something that I, I found Rhino does very well. And yeah, basically you can see, can you see my mouse? Yes. Yes. Uh, these tools here are uh, Rhino tools like trim, split, you can see that it's basically the same, um, the same icon. And yeah, so we, I, um, I use a lot, those, those tools I use a lot because it's, um, it's very useful. And another thing is the snaps. Uh, these naps are very, very useful to, to the creation of the patterns because you can make things very precisely and Correct. smoothly. Yeah. Yes, snaps are very important, especially yeah. with, uh, to the drawings. Otherwise, lines are many times disconnected or... Yeah, exactly. And that's a big problem sometimes to fix that later. It's easier to be clean in the beginning than try to fix that later, so everything. Exactly, yes. I have an idea now as we are recording this webinar and it will mm -hmm. uh, be available on, on the McNeil Europe YouTube channel. We will mm -hmm. add also a list of resources there and nice uh, shoe design tutorials because okay. there are many lately. So we'll add okay. that. And also companion software, other plugins like, for example, LutraCAD that I think it, it, it allows developing uh, 3D shapes into 2D, 2D shapes. Okay. What else? Well, John D says, if you can bring up the material cost breakdown again, I think that as this is going to be recorded, he just need to play the oh. video again and yeah, sure. Or yes. And then go, go back to that. Or of course you can, if there are any questions that we don't cover here, feel free to uh, um, send an email to Federico or to Food for Rhino, and then we will forward the email to him. For sure. Yes. Uh, fake fake says that it's not a fake account. He's Ivan <laughs> from Mexico. Good. Greetings, uh, Ivan. And what else? Uh, Brian Hughes says, okay, if you set coasting rotation to 45 degrees, it will look at all 45 degree rotations while searching for the optimal placement. Yes, exactly. You, and if you, if you set one, it will take uh, overnight to make because it will look at every combination of one degree, but you can do it that as well. So it, it is, of course, you, it's a little bit at the beginning, you need to lear, learn what's the best configuration. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that will we'll do exactly as you said. Okay. And Eric Hondebring, again, he says that squish and smash are not good enough for flattening uh, for flattening orthopedic lasts. 
so this is your holy grail. Yeah. Maybe Eric has a suggestion yeah. if you can post there your workflow or, or what other tools are you using for that? It would be great mm -hmm. for the rest of the viewers. Okay. <laughs> uh, thank you. Yes, it is sort of a sort of a holy grail because also I believe there are some softwares that do it and I've seen them and I don't know, uh, it's probably bias, <laughs> but yeah, every, every time you make something like that, as, as I said before, you ask 10 different people, they will have something different to say, each and one of them. So it is uh, very difficult to make everybody agree on this. And that's why in it, it has not been done yet because we want to make it uh, very precise and very, very smooth and very customizable. Nice. And then we have, uh, well, Julian Boe says that it would be chévere, it would be great. Uh, we could do, repeat this webinar in Spanish. Uh, well, we need to, I don't know if, if you speak Spanish, Federico? No, not, not really. Yes, Italian. Italian. But we will try to add some subtitles to the video. Okay. We are doing this with other webinars. If we can, we subtitle them in German, Spanish, Italian, French, etc. Awesome. And A.V. Shuresh um, has a new question. It says, does it have restriction tools like boot height restriction while grading? Uh, yes, you can set, you, you can see here, uh, on the pattern grade um, panel here, you can set every kind of rule to develop, for example, the leg of the boot uh, in a different way from the, from the actual shoe. Uh, you can lock, you can create groups, as I said, you can override rules so that one single line follows a totally different grading rule. So, yeah, right now I do not have a, a boot to show, but um, yeah, it is, it is uh, thought out to be powerful and yeah, you can basically do um, everything that is done in other CADs for, uh, for pattern making. Yes, there are plenty of rules so you can assign to lines and to, and to cascade on every, um, every entity. So yes. Cool. Yes. And finally, uh, uh, J. Ramon Perez asks, is there is an educational version of Jevero? Yes, there is the, oh, uh, educational version. Uh, no, but we can, we, we can discuss if you contact us, we can discuss. We have two versions, the trial and the uh, commercial one that have no difference. It's just the same software. It's not, um, it's not light or less functions or anything. So there is a 90 day and then the commercial. But if you contact us, we can discuss it, of course. Uh, because, for example, we two schools, uh, we give it for free uh, because we want to reach as many people as possible, young people. To, who learn Rhino and learn pattern engineering through Rhino. So educational version for, uh, for a school, we will give it for free if it's like a class of people. And nice. yeah. What a nice offer. Yeah, right. it's, uh, it's our, uh, it's a, it's our st strong point. We want to be uh, very clear and very, nice. yeah. Now also Bobby Gohil uh, says, asks if you teach conduct workshops for pattern engineering. Uh, yes, I'm more of a, I can use more the software than do the pattern engineering stuff. So um, the, most, the most courses that I've done, I've done them to actual pattern engineers that know what to do. Mm -hmm. or together with a pattern engineer that will tell me what to do. <laughs> okay. So I, I know the basics, but you know, a pattern engineer knows infinitely more than I do. But do you have uh, a, a group of people available yes. uh, to do this kind of training? 
yes probably these days online mainly because yeah, it's difficult exactly. to travel yeah nice what else uh AB Shures asks if Jebero cost is part of Jebero or a separate a separate module. No, it's it is separate, but if you buy Jebero, it comes with the it's okay it, with Jebero. It's a different and different module, but included with the price. Yes, yes. and um, yeah, it, it, it uh, <laughs> sold for cheaper uh, as, as a standalone, but it works better with. Jevro and, and it comes with Jevro with a full license. It comes with Jevro. Nice. And Brian Hughes makes another suggestion. He says that on your grading, uh, you should integrate ISO uh, TS 19407, the one global shoe size standard based on the length of human feet released in 2015. Okay, that, that's very uh, interesting. Suggestion for this ISO. I will definitely go get back to to Mr. Brian by email for uh, for more information about that. Thank you very much. What else? Um, Stephanie Path says in Spanish that it would be great to have the subtitles. We will we will try to do that. And F equals F um, says if there are if you have any suggestions of replacements for crisping for three design for three D design. Crispin was bought by Autodesk, right? Many years yes. ago, but then yeah. they con they are still the owners or they sold it to another company. So Crispin it's, does not does not have support anymore. Anymore. It's so, discontinued. Yeah. So people who have it, they, they keep their dongles very very tightly because any update or any if you lose it, you lose Crispin. So uh, mm. it needs to be just the dongle is yeah. like gold. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And um, of course, the 3D substitute is Rhino, <laughs> which is the, Rhino. I mean, to make, to make 3D, <laughs> Rhino is the most uh, powerful. I remember being with, with the Crispin team in a, in a trade show in Bologna many years ago. I think it was okay. CMAC, C the trade show. Yeah. That was before they were bought by, by, by right, Autodesk. And they yeah. had some sort of connection with Rhino. But yeah, oh. after that, I remember that we lost contact and then yeah, the software was discontinued. Hmm. What else? Thanks and thanks. Thanks to you for being here. And um, Amit Sinde says, I need to buy something for pattern. Of course, you need to buy Jebero. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's that's a cool idea. Maybe Shures <laughs> confirms that Autodesk closed the footwear division. Yeah, it was. It was closed. very linked to Delcam, right? As well, Crispy. It was made by Delcam, <laughs> but then Autodesk bought it uh, because they wa they wanted uh, power mill and power shape mm -hmm. uh, in the whole package that Delcam made. That was the most interesting interesting thing. But and and other projects were discontinued, and crisping was one of those. Mm -hmm. So people who were relying on crisping for production were scared, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, uh, a customer, um, our main customer financed our uh, this software. So yeah, with the with the um, with the request to make it inside Rhino and to make it you know, resembling of crisping to not shock uh, the, the, the pattern engineer who have been using crisping for 20 years. So the interface wants to be similar. And yeah, okay, that's the story. <laughs> and now last question, and this is mine. Okay. Uh, do you think that with your technology or your technology could be also apply to, to bugs, to handbags or bugs? We have we have spoken to a few people who asked us this, and yes, there are some functions that need to be added that are specific for bags. Mm -hmm. But usually, the way we work is uh, we do not charge uh, extra to make a specific feature just for one person. Mm -hmm. So if somebody needs, if three people need. Uh, a feature for uh, for bags we add it and so yeah 
we 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 can help in that because team. I don't I don't know if it's the same people that uh, do the pattern engineering for shoes or for bags, exactly. but I know that inside that uh, many some firms of mm -hmm. of uh, fashion. Mm -hmm. uh, it's maybe eighty percent of what they sell are shoes and bags. Yeah. So could make sense to to have yeah. maybe different interface or adapted or. But I guess the technology must be the same. It's pattern at the end. No, I, there must be some yeah, different exactly. things. But okay. So many thanks, Federico, and many thanks Thank to all much. the viewers. Uh, as said, this will be published very soon on our YouTube channel. We will add there are some. Uh, other resources for tutorials, etc. Also Federico's email, feel free to contact him, also, also us. And uh, I wish you a happy summer and nice vacation if, if you can do them. We'll be back in September with new new set of webinars. And we will announce this through our typical channels, blog, e-news, etc. Again, thank you. And Thank you very much. Have a nice evening. You too. Bye. Thanks to everybody. Bye. -bye.